Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Will Comer and Goodell. Hello, welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. It's a very exciting day. I got Goodell with me. Hello. Hello, I'm Goodell. Hello. And we're all here because we are celebrating an indie game today called Frame Makers. First, there is Super Smash Flash. Then there is Super Smash Flash 2. And from, from the ash of Super Smash Flash. Nice. I did it. Nice. Comes <laughs> <laughs> Frame Makers. I'm really excited to talk about it. We got two devs today, Cloud9 and Max. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello. Everyone. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. I'm especially glad that you guys could come today because you're like balls deep in a Kickstarter right now and it's very busy work. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? We are doing significantly better than we were for the first week. I think we've gotten a little bit more sleep, you know. Good. We're in the mm-hmm. middle portion, which is a little more restful than the other first third and last third. So feeling good. Yeah, that crunch was rough. Yeah. But, uh, I understand now what people deal with when they run Kickstarters. <laughs> <laughs> you read everybody talking about how hard it is to actually be running the Kickstarter campaign, but until you experience it, you don't really grasp like how much work goes into it. Yeah. What What are some of the hard things that you guys didn't really think would be the hard things? Um, the, the writing. <laughs> yeah. The writing. There is a lot, a lot of text, writing. Yeah. yeah. Just because, especially for a project like this, we felt like there's so many parts of the project that we're trying to communicate and not just like make sure that we remember to say, but say in an efficient way so the Kickstarter doesn't end up. I mean, it's already really long in my opinion, but some Mm -hmm. of the first drafts had it be like novel length getting all of this information out there. So we spent (laughs) a long time, not only in the Kickstarter body, but also all of the updates, all of the communication with people, with our backers, all the tweets, all the Mm -hmm. other posts, the video, just making sure that we're able to communicate this as efficiently as possible was a massive undertaking that we definitely underestimated the time expenditure on. Well, in fairness, it's a very like heady kind of, prospect that you guys are pitching so like let me let me, let's see if i can sum it up for anybody in here right now that's not that isn't totally tuned into frame makers we're talking about an indie game focused platform fighter a la smash bros and the things that are going to make this one big and make this stand apart first of all you have very well-known indie characters already such as downwell guy well taro that's the name well taro yep yeah. You got uh, New Grounds Tank Man, you got Octodad. That's a good pull. You guys got a good yeah. pull on that guy. And all other things from Rivals of Aether and so on. And what I'm really excited about, you guys, in addition to the game itself, are releasing software that lets people add their own characters and assist trophies and stages into the game, which is hopefully going to give you this like endless pool of, of internet uh, community asset madness. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's the idea of free tools. <laughs> that's a good description of it. Yeah, that is freaking wild. I can understand how a Kickstarter is hard to write for that. My God. Yeah. Well, and the other tricky thing is there's not really any similar Kickstarters that we can look to that have like this different number of different things that we're trying to communicate. Like yeah. a lot of game Kickstarters are just trying to tell, you know, the central gameplay hook and their story focus. And that's really all they need to communicate so they can kind of focus on mood and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas for us, like I said, it's just so much info that I don't want to bore people with. Mm-hmm. So you guys are joining kind of the ranks of the, I guess I would call it the indie game Smash Bros. family. I've named Rivals of Aether. I think there's a couple more. There's something Bounty yeah, something. Slap City. Slap yeah, City. Slap City is the other one in our main roster. Which is where yeah. the cold duck comes from. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I we guess, first of all, what do you guys, what are you guys going to say is the one that makes Frame Makers the winner here? What's the one, besides the community assets, uh, why is Frame, Frame Makers going to be the absolute gold standard for indie Smash? Well, I... I would say it's because we've been doing it for a long time. Because, uh, like, as you can probably tell, like, we're all, we're Smash enthusiasts. Like, because with Super Smash Flash, that's all we kind of did for the past decade and a half. Mm-hmm. So, at least for me, uh, I think there was a certain turning point where I was like, you know, I can actually do this. Like, because, you know, I'm obviously, like, I want to see that indie crossover Smash as well. Mm-hmm. But 10 years ago, I wasn't thinking I could do it. And then the team that, you know, I ended up finding all these talented people... And it ended up hitting a point where it was like, wait, we actually have everything we need to be able to do this. So between that and the the workflow that we came up with with Flash as well, yeah, had a big influence too. So, jeez, yeah, you said half a decade, yeah. and you're not wrong. We're talking 14 years. That's freaking awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> you mentioned the talented people. Now's a good time. Well, uh, if you guys don't mind, introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, so I'm Cloud slash uh, Cloud9 or Greg McLeod. It's my full name. Um, and I'm I'm pretty much the the lead programmer and like I guess uh, I don't know head of McLeod like, Gaming. Yeah, I'm the head of McLeod here. Gaming. <laughs> and um, I've economist. kind of been like. Yeah, I've been like the face of Smash Flash for up until now. So now we finally got something, you know, something mm-hmm. original to to tout, which is nice. And I'm Max. So I uh, first found out about Smash Flash with Smash Flash 1. And I joined the McLeod Gaming forums in 2007. And then in 2008, I started getting more active. And I found my way onto the Smash Flash team a year or two later, I think, when I uh, started kind of like the balance department. Because before that, I think all of the balancing was just done by you, Cloud. There wasn't really any like yeah, that was bad. effort <laughs> to stop. Yeah, yeah, don't play those old versions. Even though like the first few, like 2000, up until like 2012, they were a little bit messy as far as character statting goes. But that's how I found my way onto the team. And then as I existed on there, I kind of expanded my role. And now I'm the lead character designer on the new project, as well as a bunch of other random hats that I wear. Oh, that's cool. And besides you two, uh, who are the prominent other members of the team? How big is the team? So our core team is five members. Um, mm-hmm. we, we were hoping that Ramsey, who's our art department lead, would be able to come on this call, but he wasn't able to make it today. Oh. Um, but we have two core members on the art department, Ramsey and Mass, who are two pixel artists, animators, effects artists. They handle pretty much everything artistically that goes into the game. Mm-hmm. And then we also have, uh, what do you think he wants to go by? We'll call him uh. Sertopia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's Jake <laughs> um, in the Kickstarter, so it's probably fine. <laughs> who's our additional programmer as well as web developer on the team. And so that's our core team. But then we've also brought over a bunch of different contractors, some of which are from outside sources, but a lot of which are from Smash Flash directly. Mm-hmm. So we have currently three contractors for just specifically character animation on the team. As you might guess, like we have a lot of very de- detailed pixel animation to do at a pretty high frame rate and like 80 animations per character. So we brought over... 80 animations per character? Yeah, I know. It's That's a lot. A lot. <laughs> we really went <laughs> over the top on that one, but I think it like pays off ultimately. We're happy with where we ended up, but this just means we need a lot of help and I don't think we would have been able to pull it off without the existence of Smash Flash, like mm-hmm. this massive talent pool to pull from of people we already have worked with extensively in the past and we know we can trust. So we have Zuko, Steven, and Likiji are two um, contracted pixel artists. Okay. And then past that, we have... Her name is CK Jong, I think is her handle, Carolyn. She's our stage artist, and she's like the main art contributor that isn't uh, sourced from Smash Flash. She was somebody that we found online, and she's done the majority of the stage and background work for the game. Okay. And then past that, we have Kira Buckland is our announcer, who is the announcer for Super Smash Flash 1, which is <laughs> yeah, the we wildest thing in the world <laughs> that we were able to bring her back for our new game, what, like 14 years later, she's coming back and she has she's like an established voice actress now, but one of her per- first projects that she worked on was Super Smash Flash 1 on Newgrounds way back when. That's awesome. That's great for her. She can kind of come back. It's a bit of a legacy role for her. That's cool. Yeah, that was really cool that we were able to do that. That was so exciting for us. Oh, and Super Soul Bros doing our soundtrack. Don't want to forget them. We were playing oh, yes. music at the of course. time. Oh, how can you forget? They're so good. So They're good. Amazing. Your soundtrack is amazing. I was playing, before we started this, I was playing some of the music in this channel, and we're all jamming out to it. This is, I think, like, you got to have the music to match the action, and it's got to be, like, Nintendo is going in a super jazzy direction right now, so I'm really glad yeah. you guys are too, you know? Yeah. Well, and the Super Soul Bros were just, like, that was a group that I was a fan of before this project was even the twinkle in anybody's eye. Like, these guys have been doing it for a long time. They've been playing at, like, Smash Brothers conventions as well as other events, so I've seen them live before. And we've also just met them in person at different events and stuff. They're a Yeah, great that's group. how I found out about them, at, at Super Smash Con. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because they were there you know, performing and I'm like, oh, wait, what about these guys at one point when we were talking about who we wanted to do the music? So, yeah, and they're really just the perfect fit for us because they come from within the Smash community just like we do. They have an extensive background in like covering a bunch, not just Smash music, but different types of video game music, Nintendo and beyond. So they yeah. fit like a glove, really. It's been amazing working with them. Yeah, I mean, their name is Super Soul Bros. That uh, You see that next to you guys <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah, right. So Super Smash Flash was a hit got a fan base. And I was a little surprised that it went from that to that, but then to Frame Makers. So what is the 
what was the difference that prompted you guys to to have a new name? And what was the new direction you guys were going in? Uh, new name, uh, like you as mean, far as the project name. What does the life of Framemakers look like? Like when was it first? You mentioned it being a twinkle in your eye. When was when was it first conceived? And then how did we get here? Yeah, may, may probably hotel talk. Because we've had like a few conventions where Smash Flash would go. Um, initially, I think Apex was the first. Yeah, 2019. Uh, yeah, then we started to go to Super Smash Con. Um, and, you know, I think for a while we were kind of like, those who are familiar with early Smash Flash development, there was talk of having like an expansions <laughs> roster. And there was like a, you know, a forum is dedicated to expansion characters, which would be characters you could theoretically add into the game on your own. Yeah. But it just didn't seem... The, with our between our workflow and like the coupling, you know, you required Flash to do it. It was kind of difficult for us to like think of a way to execute that with Flash. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we moved further to like now, you know, all of our skill sets kind of blossomed, and like a, a lot of us reached a point where we're, we started getting interested in like, like, hey, we could probably do something like this, where you know, we could take the the ideas we're using now to develop this game and turn it into a different game, and uh, you know. Every year we'd be meeting each other at these cons talking about these things and talking about it over, you know, Slack or Discord or whatever. And, uh, you know, at at a certain point, we just decided to go for it. And I think it was, I think we just estimate, like, it was, it's been over two years of, like, actual hard development on the game. It was somewhere between two and three where we came up with the really loose concepts, like a game that allows you it's a core roster of indie characters where you can call an additional huge roster as assists and we have the custom content tools that was developed around two two to three years ago unfortunately we were on with the free version of slack at the time so our chat logs are all gone to the window <laughs> for exact dates the stupid but, free version of slack i know well we've changed but i let me just say slack crawled so discord could run that's all yeah <laughs> i like that <laughs> it's just so much so, better so the Frey Tools was always a core part of the concept then. It, it wasn't something of like yeah. an afterthought. Of, oh, it pretty what much, if, what if we yeah, it had to happen? be because, you know, if people are going to be able to use this, we can't have them having to, you know, pay for a, a cloud subscription service, you know? Like right. We want it to be accessible and, you know, affordable, so. I don't think it would have worked if Frey Tools was an afterthought. It really did have to be developed from the ground up with user-friendly um, character creation and content creation tools in the front of our minds. Yeah. And we really wanted to make sure that like those that group of people, people who made and people who want to play custom content were treated as first class here, which is something like Claude mentioned the expansion system. We simply would not have been able to do that. We would have like no matter how much work we put into it, if you're having to go through Flash and use <laughs> your like figure it out yourself and that it just wasn't built in a user friendly way, that would have been a good experience for people trying to make their own stuff. Yeah. Which is kind of why that was before any of the other ideas for that project. That was kind of the founding concept. And then the other stuff came a little bit later. Yeah. And don't get us wrong. Like Flash is good at a lot of things. Yeah. For but sure. it's not it's not very good at like a specific thing, I would say. So yeah, that's why we're that's what we're kind of focused on with Frey Tools is making it really good at specifically, you know, game asset management for like a 2D you know, type of platforming game. Yeah. Like and this. did I read that you guys are developing a lot of the content for the game in the Frey tools? Like, so from the beginning, you're already using your own user created software? Yeah, not from the beginning. Because okay. we actually, um, like, act, uh, I would say probably since the last game I released in 2017, uh, Yeah Gem Fury, um, which is another commercial release that I did with a friend from college. Uh, and we actually, we had a tool that converted uh, Swifts to sprite sheets that you could use in like an html5 type of game okay so yeah if you look up um i think I, it's called sprite satchel it's on github if anyone wants to tinker with it but it lets cool. you like it's kind of like uh zoe which is another similar thing uh that lets you just pop in a swift get sprite sheets and not have to think about it like it was really nice okay so we use that as like a temporary measure to kind of get the prototypes out the door of the game earlier and then recently we started working more on the fray tools to get like to get it to the point that you see in the video where where it looks pretty and like you know doesn't uh isn't doesn't require going through multiple software to get <laughs> to right. get a character yeah. exported it was just like it's very very clunky but it's an interim solution just like the existence of which kind of saved our bacon as far as actually being able to start developing the gameplay concepts and doing prototypes and stuff okay so i've been curious about this and i feel like i'm probably not the only one when it comes to Frey Tools, what 
level of I guess technical expertise is required for for users. I mean, you, you describe it as being a user friendly way to add content to the game. Do I need to be an experienced pixel artist to use it, or do I? How much coding experience do I need to use it? Yeah, never touch yeah, flash so, in your life or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing to note is that like obviously everyone has different like starting points when they're when it comes to software like this. Uh, but you know, a lot of the Newgrounds community. We are all just teens making that stuff in Flash, you know, using right. tutorials. So <laughs> there's going to be, you know, like the more advanced of something you want to make, obviously you need to know how to mo do more advanced things. But we're going to be, you know, one of the goals is to provide like a starting point so that you don't necessarily have to, you know, from scratch do everything. Yeah. You know, because if you're importing a character, you don't necessarily have to have all their moveset done to, to try them out. Right. You know, you start a little bit at a time, get the... Get their aerials done first, test them out, all right, add in some throws, and uh, we, you know, we could put, it's really just like a, um, you know, as far as getting stuff into the tool is concerned, sort of a drag and drop type of deal, mm -hmm. because you got your, your images or sprites or whatever you, whatever you want to show in the game, you put it on the timeline just like in Flash and arrange it, you know, flipbook style. So, you know, if you know how to make a flipbook, all you really need to do is learn how to insert a frame, and then there you go. Yeah. Like, it's not like... You know, it's not difficult, but I will say that uh, we're we're going to be trying very hard to make sure that there's people that want to do advanced things can do them, but at the same time, we're not like making it, you know, too. You can still if you're just, if you're just somebody who wants to drag some sprites in and have your character work, that's going to be available to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Okay. So it's the Got same it. philosophy with the game itself, where it's easy to pick up, but right. Difficult yeah, there you go. Master. Easy to pick up, hard to master. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh my god. I have so many freaking questions about the Frey tools and the content creation. It's just such a big thing. But first, before I kind of like really go all in on that, I do want to ask about the licensed characters you guys are using and what it was like to get those. Like, are, what's your relationship with the Autodat devs and the BitTrip devs? Sure. Um, honestly, in our experience, we were, this was something like when we were first concepting this project, we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into as far as negotiating with indie devs, because we've mostly been insular in our development up until the start of this project. But it has been like better than you can even imagine. Like indie developers are really approachable, great to talk to, great to work with. Like it's, I mean, there's a lot of people that we've had to reach out to, so there's some workload there, but we've had, we haven't had a single bad interaction with anybody. Like we've been reaching out and we've been talking to a ton of developers and they're all amazing. Like the indie community is so open to this type of project and to helping each other out that I think that's played a huge role in making the project what it is today. That's great. I was curious yeah. about this. So do you see this possibly happening where like somebody in the community creates an, in a, a character from an indie game they like, and then later on, like the indie studio is like, "Hey, we we do we either don't want that, or hey, we want you guys to officially make that, not have it in the community, and that there's some double standard there." Does that make sense? If it, yeah. So if just kind of the same way that most user generated content works, if the rights holder, like somebody makes a character that they don't have rights to, and the rights holder was to approach us and say they want us to take it down, we would do so. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's their rights to their character to do whatever they choose. If they approach us and say, hey, we don't want this user version, but you would want to, or we would want you to develop it as official content, then we would still take it down if that's what they were requesting, and then we'd, you know, enter our normal talks from there on. Yeah. Sounds kind it of case happen. by case. Yeah, yeah case, case by case. case. And generally speaking, it just feels like they've been so approachable up to this point. I'm sure there'd be some, you know, we could talk about those yeah. things as they come up. Yeah. Or like maybe there's a future where uh, a user created character is so good that you make them part of the roster, part of the ship that like ships with the game or something like that. That sounds like a dream. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> They're making yeah. content so good you just add it to your own <laughs> doing the work for you. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, you talked about taking things down at request. I think that opens discussion for if. Uh, something is added to the game that is, or, you know, somebody makes some user content that is, you know, problematic, but maybe gets some amount of following. I mean, you know, say somebody mm -hmm. makes something that is wildly offensive, or you just have hundreds of penis <laughs> characters, or just whatever. <laughs> Uh, right. Sure. You know, how do you, how do you expect to to deal with that same sort of thing? Just case by case, take them down as they show up. 
Yeah, it's just going to have to be a case-by-case basis. Um, we haven't talked too much about the penis characters. <laughs> I, that's hard to believe, wildly, frankly. I can think of like more wildly offensive things. Um, we'd probably have to do something if we got like a bunch of penises, penis assists. We'd have to stop them from like if like showing up. Like if I if I want to say, oh, I'm going to play a random you know user generated content today. I don't want it to be like that yeah we'll have to moderate to some degree right the content just Um, to make sure as far as like you know racial slurs caricatures like anything super offensive like that we would just remove it on a case-by-case basis like i don't think we'd want that on our servers anywhere where people could access it through our game yeah what about um like nudity type what if there's a not safe for work game indie game that somebody wants to add and there's like a lewdness to it is there something that you have to do legally for that or something that's an interesting prospect we'd probably have to gate it off some way i don't think we've discussed about it that yeah. much of course yeah, it's me that thinks about like this, this kind of stuff yeah, <laughs> yeah like mugen already <laughs> like exists with a similar issue if you think about yeah. it yeah so. It might just we might just have to like lock down on how you're able to share it. Like ultimately, if you send your friend a file and they open it in the game, they'll be able to do whatever they want. It's more about like having it available through yeah. our game that we'd be concerned about. Yeah, I see what you mean. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna ask something that I feel like we're all going to think about in the next couple of weeks and months as the game comes out. You were letting people release millions of characters, hundreds of thousands, all with their own fighting styles, different moves, balance. <laughs> <laughs> well, to some degree, that's going to have to be left up to the people making the characters. And if you look at other games with custom content in them, there are like clearly characters that are like, okay, I'm going to try really hard to make this in line with the base balance of the cast. Mm-hmm. And then you get the people who are less interested in that, who want to make like, I'm going to make a guy with a stick of dynamite that kills you right away. <laughs> and if people want to do that, they can. Most of it, like, we're going to try to have some sort of curation tools that let you find like the more mm-hmm. balanced characters. Hopefully the community will be able to sort some of that out themselves and like recommend and have like more downloads and whatever voting system we have. Yeah, kind of crowdsourcing the... the... Yeah. You know that aspect but also like the most common or one of the most popular characters in i think every user generated content game in existence is ronald mcdonald who is intentionally overpowered so i'm sure we'll end up <laughs> with something like that and people are going to love playing it my goal is that people are able to find what they're looking for and if that's crazy characters or good characters or just like balanced characters i think that's i'm happy for them okay so when it comes to, it sounds like it's going to be the crowd managing themselves as far as making something overpowered, underpowered. Because I was wondering if there's some way to make metrics out of balancing a character. If like they punch for five points and that's more than the usual punch for three points, so they have to take two points out of something else. Or if it's like that specific. I've seen some people try to make systems. Like if you could probably even find it online for how people try to classify Smash Brothers characters, for example. Mm-hmm. And But I've never seen a system that can accurately rate how good a character is is based on those metrics usually it's just something that's going to be at least for now beyond the grasp of the machines to figure out yeah but if somebody figures something out let us know (laughs) exactly but yeah we're all in this together figuring it out so okay any fighter any fighting game you're going to talk about building for casual players versus competitive players, right? Because sometimes their needs don't match. Sometimes a competitive player wants 89 different moves that have their own hitboxes, but then a casual player is like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Where is that balance for you? So I kind of come, like where my balance philosophy comes from or design philosophy comes from is very like old school Smash Brothers, where Mm. I think the first time you use a move for all of your characters, you should pretty much know what that move does. Like I, I don't want to figure out like baseline functionality for the character, I don't want you having to go to Google or read your guidebook or anything like that. I I want you to be able to hop into a character and play around with them and have a good time and know what you're doing and not be super confused. And I think a lot of the depth just comes from having characters that have cohesive but versatile kits. So you can use these moves in different creative ways. If you're like really precise or your spacing's really good or you're really creative and you come up with different combinations that people have never thought of before, that's where a lot of the depth comes from rather than having the characters themselves be really opaque. Yeah, <laughs> weird like behind the... Yeah. I'm glad you said old school Smash Bros because I'm thinking even some of the newer Smash Bros characters are like that now where it's like I press the B button and something happens. It's like a menu or <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like Minecraft yeah. Steve is in the game now and I figured out I didn't know how the... Play the freaking character. I felt like a felt like a new. You know, 
We were actually, me and Cloud were talking about this right before the call, like different Smash Brothers design, because as you might guess, we talk about Smash Brothers a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, and have for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it makes sense to me, like, why newer Smash Brothers games have ended up in this direction, because, I mean, they have a bazillion characters at this point, so they're trying to just come up with whatever ways they can to keep it fresh for their dedicated fans. But for us, we regardless of what the exact size ends up being, we're going to have a much more tight locked-in roster, so I want to make sure that every character feels really distinct, but also adheres to that like really I mean, easy-to-learn, hard-to-master yep. design philosophy. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering now... I keep saying that because I'm I'm coming. I can I can see how this is fun for you because the more we do this, the more ideas I'm coming up with and problems and yeah. Oh, and I love talking about this stuff. Like even before this project, <laughs> yeah. I just love thinking about platform fighter design, Smash Brothers design, everything related to that. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering about tournament play. Because a game like this is going to encourage tournament play, and if you mm-hmm. do have it, are you going to allow a certain number of um, user generated characters in that? And if you do have them, are they going to have to be, is there going to be like a moderation board, which is like, no, you can't use that character in a tournament, he's too OP or something like that. Well, it sounds like it's up to the community, really. Because like, obviously we'll be providing a base set of content that we hope people will consider the tournament friendly standard, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, like same thing with Smash, official Smash stages, like, oh, that stage is banned. You know? Yeah, exactly. The community is going to have to come together to to some aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think we can also look to Rivals of Aether, who have a, a workshop system implemented, and they just have kind of a mix of different types of tournaments. Like, they're big official ones, which we're aiming for the, you know, core game itself to be, like, a fully functional, competitive, as well as casual experience in its own right. So if you're really like, I don't want to do any of this user-generated nonsense, I just want the actual game, the game itself is still going to be good and like perfectly suited for tournament play. Mm-hmm. But I would also like to see the user-generated character and assistance. Yeah, that would be cool to see. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys going to be releasing your own characters and downloadable extra content? And is this going to be an ongoing project for you after release? Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see where it takes us. Mm-hmm. I would love, I mean, hopefully <laughs> we've got the impression across that we really, really, really like developing this kind of content. Like yeah. even before this project, we've been working on platform fighters for almost half of our lives, maybe more than half in your case, Cloud. Mm, so Yeah, I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> so like my dream is to be able to continue to add content to this game forever. I, it, it would have to be like financially viable to do so, but mm-hmm. assuming it is, I want to keep working on it for a long time. Speaking of financial viability, yes, uh, we mentioned the the Kickstarter a little bit at the start of this conversation, but uh, I'm curious if y'all were pleasantly surprised by the the Kickstarter turnout. I mean, I'm looking at it now; it's what a hundred thousand over goal over the original goal. Yep. Oh, yeah, we were definitely Pikachu surprise face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had yeah. to scramble a little bit to figure out like like we didn't write out our. We didn't write anything out planning for that, so it's like, oh no, we need to like post something. <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, we'll probably hit it within the first, uh, hopefully, our first week or something, and then like two hours later, we've already hit our funding goal. Jeez. <laughs> to be like, okay, I think how? Those are actual. T- it was like two and a half or something like that. I don't know. Our fans are just, I, they're like, it's beyond what we could have ever hoped for. Like I, even our most optimistic estimates didn't have us hitting our goal anywhere near that, right? Cloud? Yeah. yeah, no way. Jeez. Is this the Super Smash Flash crowd showing up? Is this the fan base you guys have developed? That's what I would attribute at least that first push to, right? Okay. Yeah. Cause we have, you know, we've been building up, building up our social media following and stuff for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like something that we've been kind of, I guess, building up almost for this purpose, really, especially this past year. It's like, let's keep building this up so we can hit day one on the, like the ground running on day one you know yeah absolutely i mean that's the kickstarter the the game nowadays is you gotta know you gotta sort of know that you have it in your pocket or else you don't do it right it's not like the early days of kickstarter you were like let's just hope we get there it's a matter of like <laughs> i know i'm gonna get there but let's see how soon i can get there and then how much i can go past that and then what i exactly. do exactly yeah right yeah yeah yeah. Jeez. so we are get to your stretch goals because you have to have stretch goals if you're going to be 140 out of 40. <laughs> you got the additional character. You got the doubled stage count. Double. That's a big thing. Not just two more stages. Mm-hmm. The entire double amount of stages. Are these things planned? Is this stuff that you had in advance or when you got the extra money where you're like, oh God, what else do we have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Thankfully, we were smart enough to plan more stretch goals than we thought we would actually reach, yeah. which is we're already in the territory of like past what we thought we would get to for our final goal. Like we're in the territory of like our dream stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we were able to add fray bets, which is something we were super looking forward to. And at this point, we're working on like adding all these cool alternate soundtracks and expanding our character roster. So we did actually know what we were going to do for stretch goals going into this. Good. So tell me about Frey Bets. I, I saw Frey Bets and I read a bit about what it is and it was really intriguing. What's the deal there? So if you've ever seen Salty Bet, and if you haven't, you should go check it out because it's still running to this day. <laughs> what that is, is a automated system that lets you just watch a stream of like Mugen custom characters. And they have like a huge selection of all sorts of crazy stuff in there, like video game characters, normal fighting game characters, anime characters, whatever you can think of. And you just bet these fake points on them. So you can choose which side you think is going to win. And if you're right, you get payouts for it. And there's a leaderboard and stuff like that for the points. Oh, cool. And for us... We are building this game with this robust UGC ecosystem, user-generated content, and we have characters, we have assists, we have stages, so this was something we wanted to bring into the game itself, so rather than having to go to an external website, we want you to be able to, like, watch all these crazy characters duking it out and trying to figure out who you think is going to win beforehand. <laughs> it's something that, personally, we've enjoyed, and I think everybody's going to really like. That's really cool. UGC is built up. What is the fictional currency you're giving us, and is there anything you can do with it besides bragging rights? The name is outstanding. <laughs> yeah, we're still working on around. it. <laughs> Frey points, Frey cash. Frey, Frey cash? Something. Yeah, yeah. Frey <laughs> something bucks. Something like that. Frey bucks. <laughs> um, we also, similarly, we have like ideas for things we want you to be able to spend it on. Like Ideally, we have a unifying currency that you can use on different, you know, maybe cosmetic items or something like that in game. Mm-hmm. We haven't scoped all that out yet, but hopefully you'll be able to use those points on something. If not, we'll still have a leaderboard at the very least. Yeah. All right, guys in the chat, start coming up with names of the fictional currency. We want it done. We have 22 <laughs> All minutes. All submissions welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All submissions welcome. And this is the point, too, guys in the chat. You uh, Start asking some questions. We'd be happy to read you guys' questions on the air. Uh, Bobby Burt says, Tom Bucks. I think that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Coom coin. Tom oh, there's Green. a good one. Coom coin. I don't know. I don't know, what <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I mean, if we get that penis UGC we were talking about. Maybe. That's right. That's right. Is there any fictional, like, who would win pairing that you're exciting somebody's going to make so that you can see, like, who would win in a fight, Batman, Superman, etc.? Yeah, Goku, Superman, obviously. Goku, Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to know. <laughs> Finally. Um, I want to play a game with you guys. We have 20 minutes. Guys in the chat, I know I'm giving you a lot to do besides asking questions and coming up with a fictional currency. But if you're listening, put a, a character or a person or anything in the world uh, that's a person or a character. And then I want you guys... Uh, Cloud and Max to describe how that character would fight and what you'd make them do. This sounds amazing. All right. Instant design challenge. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> Go for it, people. We have a very de- dedicated fan base ready to work for us at any time. Ooh. That guy. I love Afro Samurai. Afro Samurai. That's some good stuff. Cloud, have you read this? Yeah, he's definitely, um, well, it was a anim- short animated series. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they did a, um, a manga version or not, but I don't know. I'm thinking more of like a one hit kill kind of thing because. This guy is kind of yeah. OP. <laughs> he kind of. <laughs> I feel like I have not seen it, but I've, I think I've seen some clips or something. Samuel L. Jackson, right? He's playing the voice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's on our short list for voice acting right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think for him, you'd want him to be like, what do they call that? Like the the style, the samurai style where they strike really fast, like so fast you can barely see it. There's some name for that fighting uh. style. Um, I always thought that would be kind of cool for a character where they're like a sword character, but unlike most of like the Smash Brothers sword characters do a lot of like longer sweeping attacks. It would be cool to have somebody who has like near instant swings for all of their attacks. Yeah, and I can like see that. Super fast movement. Tetromino. Tetromino. is a real character design. Which, as we um, all know, is the four square piece in Tetris. <laughs> I had to yeah. Google that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is something I, I've always like... I've been a huge Tetris fan. I still like play Tetris. That's like my de-stress game. It's nice. going to te- the new one is Tet Tet Tetrio Tetrio Tetrio. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I'm still somehow really terrible at Tetris, but I just like kind of hit that up <laughs> when I have like ten minutes between things to do. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> I feel like it would be really fun if you could swap out the different types of tetrominoes and Ooh. like have they have like slightly different physics and movesets and you kind of have to flop them along the ground and you can like 
in the middle of your combo, switch out to line piece to smack somebody who's a little bit further away. Oh, that's so badass. That's really cool. Yeah. cool. You could probably cycle them, too, like have them all out at the same time, like Pikmin style, too. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So Ronald McDonald is the obvious one here. Yeah, people are wanting you to <laughs> give us the Ronald we all crave. Previously mentioned, you know, I would hate to intrude on the design that's already been done to perfection. So I would just look up the Rivals of Aether mod for Ronald <laughs> McDonald and you'll, you won't you will believe what you see. Just find some videos of that. Oh, I see that somebody in the chat says Shrek. What do you think about <laughs> Shrek? Thank you, person in the chat. Now, Shrek that was me. would be... <laughs> Wario down B, for sure. Wario down B, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You ever, you ever want a Wario that's like twice as tall, twice as slow, can barely jump, mm-hmm. twice as powerful? I think that's about what you're getting. That's Ungin, pretty good. Onion super attack if we reach that stretch goal to really power him up. Yeah. <laughs> Final Smash, the, uh, um, I don't give a fuck about your bad reputation scene from Shrek. <laughs> just in its entirety. Dude, <laughs> I want to hear scene. the Soul Bros cover of that song would be legendary. That would be That's good. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, <laughs> Whoever owns the IP for Shrek now, hit us up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Pluffmott, who's a patron, and we all love him very much. Uh, have you guys heard of the Newgrounds game Friday Night Funkin' that's come out recently? It's okay if not, but. I have not. Okay, yeah, I have. It's in my to do actually to check. Oh it yeah, Cloud has. Um, I didn't try to check it out yet. Though. If you see in the chat, there's that cute little boy uh, with the blue hair and the red hat. The basic premise is it's a dancing game, or no, it's not. It's a singing game where it's kind of like Guitar Hero, and you have to match the notes, and it's like DDR a little bit. And he is trying yeah. to ha- um, have sex with his girlfriend, but his <laughs> her dad is a rock star. Good for him. I'm only describing this so you can give a <laughs> give us a good move set for this kid. <laughs> Cross promotion. No, a- a rhythm game character is something that we've kind of thrown around because there are some like indie rhythm games that we could represent. Mm-hmm. There are some ideas for that, and I'd have to play the exact game to get something more specific, but it is like very interesting different ways that you could implement that. Some of the challenges for that are just like, how do you implement rhythm into the moveset without it being annoying to play where you have the stage music playing? Like, yeah. You can't really be matching up to that stage music. But some ideas we had were just like by playing, like doing a quick little rhythm, you get like a boost up in your attack. So you like get a temporary power up if you're attacking in rhythm or something along those lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Donkey Kong had that final smash, right? He used to do the bongos thing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bring it back. I love that final smash. Get those bongos. Ooh, Madeline, that Jetmos, Madeline from Celeste. So this is one that I think might be too close to something that could actually happen. I have no comment on that. <laughs> Evelyn, that heard, isn't a confirmation. You heard it here first. Away. It's Celeste. <laughs> She's coming. Yeah. We just want to ex- excite y'all. So. Ooh. Yeah, I want to... For things that could like conceivably actually happen, mm-hmm. we're probably going to have to keep those on the back burner. But Fair enough. Fair enough. Someday. Someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Commander video is from Rhythm Games, but he also just has a lot of other stuff to pull from, so we didn't feel the need to, like, give him a central Rhythm Game gimmick. Um, for him, we just, like, pulled a little bit more directly from just kind of how he moves, his Rainbow Trail stuff. He, he slides around a lot and has yeah, a lot of options out of the, that. The runner aspect of, of Commander video. Yeah. When I say, like, a Rhythm Game character, I mean, like, a character where you try to implement some sort of Rhythm gimmick itself into their moveset. Plus, Matt uh, says Tom Fulp. You gotta give a moveset to Tom Fulp. <laughs> Cloud, what do you got? That's a tricky one. What would he You've take? met him in real life, right? Aww. Yeah, I feel like hmm, maybe I feel like he'd be if he was an assist character. I know he'd be like the, the ultimate support. He's like because he's such a yeah. good, a good guy. Yeah, that's right. He uh, oh, yeah. shout out to Tom by the way. Yeah, he's letting us like, use tank command. So that's awesome. And we also have our new grounds art contest for anybody who hasn't been paying attention to it. There, we have, we're currently running one for the next. I think it's. Until next Friday week. or something. Yeah, talk yeah. about that. Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen some submissions from the art contest yet? Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. We've been, we've been taking a look at it. Yeah, it's, it's like we're excited to be able to like rank these. It's going to be interesting. Ooh. Without <laughs> um, without giving away any like rankings, you think you're going to have any shout outs you want to give to things you've seen? I want to avoid that yeah. so far. No <laughs> favoritism yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There we'll are some really cool thing. ones. And we actually, in our own like dev chat, we made like a room specifically just for posting every entry because it's so cool just to see the fan art pour in. Mm-hmm. 
And even just like outside of the contest, there's like all sorts of pixel artists who have been just drawing things in FrameMaker's art style, which is something that still just like makes me feel amazing seeing the phrase FrameMaker's art style, because that's what we, we put a lot of work into the art style yeah. um, being very like distinctive and cohesive and stuff for this game. So it's just like the art outpouring of support from the art community has been incredible to see. I mean, you said it yourself, the indie game community is supportive, the art community is supportive, the community yeah. is supportive it's cool that you can operate in this environment where everybody's just trying to help out and have fun and yeah it's just yeah. cool for us just because we're we're not like professional we didn't start out as professional game developers like we all came from just a community of people playing super smash flash well god made it but yeah. the rest of us yeah. just found the game loved the game wanted to contribute to it and built it up from there so just like continuing on and having the same community feel for the new project is great yeah oh you guys are at the in the nick of this Kickstarter thing. At the end of it, are you guys just going to take a break and go to the beach or something? Yeah, maybe not <laughs> yeah, the beach in the Northeast. The COVID safe <laughs> beach, of course. <laughs> yeah, God, I wish. It would be so amazing to just go on an actual vacation right after the Kickstarter and take like a week off before getting back into it. Mm. I'm going to try to just take a mental break at the very least. Yeah, yeah. same here. I, we're going to need it. the holidays. I talk to uh, indie devs sometimes, and especially when they either are about to release or have just released their big game, the one they've spent so many years on. And I'll ask, like, are you guys going to take a break? And they'll say, like, no, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to plunge right back into it. It's just like a, a yeah. creative impulse, I think. The classic move is you release a game and then you spend the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours just completely freaked out about people, bu- you know, <laughs> bugs. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Like... For us, like, the crunch, for me, like, the really, really bad crunch was the week before and the week after the Kickstarter launch, and I'm guessing it's going to be that times a million for the game launch itself. Like, there's not going to be any breaks for a while after the game comes out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you're going to take it, now's the time to take it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. We'll see. And even still, like, I don't think a break is going to be me, like, stopping entirely. A break will be, like, you know, just a few hours here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that counts for something. It counts for something. Well, we have 12 days to go in you guys' Kickstarter. You have 12 more days to sweat about it. You already have 144,000. You have 3,233 backers. And I want to make sure you guys get a little bit extra. So what's this next uh, stretch goal? Family Jewels alternate OST? Who's Family Jewels? Well, it looks like we're about to hit that one. But he's um, another musician who has done some indie game covers in the past. If you've heard of Crypt of the Necrodancer... Both them and OC Remix, which is a stretch goal we already hit, did like full alternate soundtracks for them. Mm -hmm. So they have experience. Family Jewels has a YouTube channel that if you're interested in metal covers of video game music, you have to check it out. For my money, he's the best to ever do it. And he has like insane output levels. Like he is always putting out more and more amazing covers. I don't know how he does it, (laughs) but you can check out his YouTube channel, look him up immediately if that's something that sounds cool to you. Yeah. But yeah, he's doing a full metal alternate cover OST. That's awesome. Okay. And then for future ones, we do have more stretch goals planned. Um, uh, I'm going to avoid spoiling it. Come on! Be, Come <laughs> on! <laughs> if you keep an eye on it, how far away? Are, oh my god, we're about to hit it. Yeah, you're like two so bucks. Probably... Away. <laughs> you might get it by the end of the episode. <laughs> Yeah, keep, keep an, eye, it, on keep an eye on it today or tomorrow um, at the very latest, probably based on our pace. Uh, we do have another additional character. You can see it's our next stretch goal coming right up. So hopefully we'll at the very least be able to hit that one. And if we do hit that one, that's like base game characters. So those aren't going to be pay- you're not going to have to pay for that one. If you're a Kickstarter backer or anything, you just get those characters. Nice. And we do have more. So hopefully we can keep the momentum going. That's been one of the surprises for us is we haven't. Like, we slowed down from the initial push, but our momentum has been, like, very steady throughout the entire project, which just means that everybody is still telling their friends about it, letting people know that we're still running, which is something we're super thankful for. Our community is amazing. God, how cool is it that you guys can kind of do this dream job and be so supported by this group? I think you guys might have one of the most, like, supportive and awesome fan bases out there. I'm really happy for you guys. Thanks. Yeah, it's Mm. really reassuring to to have that like i'm definitely thankful for especially during a crazy time like this like not everybody necessarily has the means to help us out but yeah you know we're gonna do our best to deliver even more than what people are backing for so (laughs) i can't wait till it's out yeah 
And this is something like going into this project, it was always a little up in the air. Like Smash Flash and Smash Flash 2 are both free games. And we do have a sizable following and player base for those. But like, are people actually, you know, willing to put money down for a paid McLeod gaming project? And it could have been the case that like, no, I only like them because the game is free. So we're not going to pay any money and the Kickstarter flops. Yeah. You know, those, those are the things you think about in the lead up, like the 12 hours before the project launches. But Oof. as it turns out, our, we, we do have the most amazing community ever to exist, ever. So <laughs> we're super thankful to them. Um, Cadell, is there anything else you were curious about? I think I'm kind of out of my official questions. Yeah, I think I think that's a good place to, to wind it down. Is there anything that we didn't cover that y'all want to say to people who were excited for the game? I definitely hope you guys will keep... Uh, you know, following our updates. Cause I think like, even if you're not going to, you know, back or anything, like just keeping an eye on it and like letting people know about these changes and like updates mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Like I want to make sure, I just want to make sure the word gets spread. Cause that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's and make sure people... we do. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, let's make sure people are doing that. So what is your Twitter and your, well, we'll link to the Kickstarter, but how can we support you and how can we plug you as much as humanly possible? Okay. You can find us on Twitter. To, uh, slash McLeod Gaming, which I'll put in here. Nice. And uh, obviously, if you back, you'll get subscribed to like the Kickstarter email updates, which is convenient. We also have a Discord if anyone is interested. It's just to come hang out. We're just slash McLeod Gaming, right? Yeah, I think it's just discord.gg slash McLeod Gaming. Okay. We finally, and same thing with YouTube, actually. We finally got rid of our longer URL, so we're just slash McLeod Gaming there, too. <laughs> nice. yeah, That's so, always a milestone. I know. <laughs> That's great. Well, guys, I know you got to get to work. You're still in the middle of it. You have 12 days left in the Kickstarter. And uh, (laughs) I'll just say one more time, you guys have an amazing project here and you have let a really, really cool fan base show their best colors. And that's going to keep on going as you guys release the game and people create characters. I can't wait to see how many different iterations of the same penis fight each other (laughs) 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 and uh, Shreks and Spongebob's. And yeah, but guys, good luck. Good luck. And thank you guys for coming on. Oh. Very last thing, I know I've been shouting out our community a bunch. Huge shout out to all of the indie devs that we've been partnering with over the course of this project and all the ones we're partnering with in the future. I mentioned it, but they've been absolutely amazing to work with, beyond supportive of like anything that we ask them for, anything that we need. If you, even if you're not interested in Frame Makers itself, please take a look down the list of content we have in there and try out some of those games. These are all games that we all personally vouch for, and I know you'll have a good time if you pick up any of them. You guys have been amazing. Goodell, thank you for being thank my co-host so much, today. Thank you so much. <laughs> I also want to quickly shout out our patrons. Help us make this possible. Benny, Charissa, Boozle, Zachary, Tumpo. Pluffmott was in the audience today. Thank you, Pluffmott, for being in the audience today. And you can check out Frame Makers. 12 days left in the Kickstarter. They still have stretch goals to get to. They have more cool stuff to show you. And um, make sure you talk about it as much as possible. Get everybody out there vouching for it. Bye. Thanks, guys. All right. Woo. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.